Well, here we are again, folks, and uh, I sure am happy to be back. I'm telling you, I just love this book of Proverbs. I love teaching it. I love reading it. I can't get enough of it, and I, I can't get enough understanding of it. Every single time I read it, I get a new understanding uh, and a new meaning and new stuff from it. It's just uh, something to just fill you up and just make you uh, jump with joy. And we're in uh, chapter 3, and today we're going to try to finish it. We're going to try to go from 20, chat, verse 27 to verse 35. We've been through four days, stuck in chapter 3. It's been a hard chapter to get all the way through. There's so much in it. There's so much to see. There's so many mistakes we made in our own life. And those mistakes that we made in our own life, we can tell other people about, and perhaps they won't make those same mistakes. And that's what's important. So it's very important that we pass on some of the things that we've learned in life. Now, one of the first things I want to tell you, especially if you're new on board and you hadn't been with us before, I want to tell you this, that uh, this book, uh, the Bible, was written as a love letter to the Christian. And if you're not saved, this book means nothing to you. This book is a hidden book to you. You have to have the same spirit that wrote the book inside of your heart in order to understand the book and understand the principles of the book. And this book was written over a period of 40 years by, uh, 1600 years, excuse me, by 40 different authors in, on a couple of continents and a couple of languages. And God took all of those authors and he had what they wrote all coincide with each other. You know that's uh, impossibility if you take the statistics from people who are in the know, even in the big no gambling, uh, would tell you the statistics would be stacked up a million to one that somebody could write a letter over here and somebody else on the other side of the world don't even know them over there could write another letter and it would be the end of the first letter. Now that's just not possible unless God did it. And we know God did it. And we've already covered this bridge several times, but I'm going to tell you, uh, my total belief is that this Bible is the Word of God from cover to cover. There's no error in it, that it's positive and it's a factual book. And uh, God, uh, this earth didn't come from a big bang. God made it. God spoke it into existence. God uh, came along, squeezed it with his hand, did whatever he did. He made the seas, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers. And he spoke all that stuff into existence. He made this world for the first 1,600 years. It didn't rain on it. The ark was made by Noah. God told Noah to make the ark. And when he made the ark, he, he uh, was making it on dry ground. It never rained. The people thought he was crazy. They looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm building an ark. What is an ark? An ark is a boat. What is a boat? Well, a boat's a thing that floats in water. Well, how are you going to get it in the water? Well, the water's going to come to the boat. Well, they say, you're crazy as a bed bug. That water ain't going to come to this boat. And he, he said, yeah, it is. God's going to have a flood on this earth. And everybody don't get on this boat is going to die. And they said, you're crazy as a bed bug, Noah. And uh, they thought he was crazy. But anyway, they took his money, I guarantee it, when he hired them to help build that boat. Hey, I'm sure that him and his boys didn't build that boat by themselves in a 100 years. So he had the other people had to help him. That was a big boat. And so I'm sure he hired people to help him. Well, they took his money. They wouldn't mind doing that. They said, well, this man's crazy. We're going to take his money if he'll give it to us. So they have to build that boat. But you know what? They have not built it, but they wouldn't get in it. And so when the day did come, and it did rain, and the boat did float, those folks couldn't get in it then. It was built too well. It had high sides on it. They couldn't get in it. God's the one that closed the door. God said, if you read that, read that about that boat, and read that about nowhere in that Bible. Find it somewhere in there if you don't know where it is. Get your Bible out and start discovering it. It's one of the best books you'll ever read. You'll never read a novel anywhere that will match the Bible. You'll never read a book anywhere that will match the story of the Bible. You want to have a good time? Get in the Bible. Put them junk books down that take your mind all over the world and to the devil and to hell and to all them places. And put something good in there that will take you to heaven and show you the good things of life. And, and um, anyway, 
we got all this out of one first. <laughs> we sat there in 27. We're supposed to go to 35 in 10 minutes. And we ain't even got started yet. But uh, it's been fun anyway up to now talking. But let's look in uh, 27. He said here, uh, do not withhold the good from those. We covered that. And he said then, uh, do not say to your neighbor, go and come back. And tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. You know what? That people got stuff in their pocket. I've I've done a paint job before. I've been a paint contractor, and I'd I'd get done, and I'd say to the man, I'd say, "How about scratching me a check?" And he'd say, "Well, I ain't got my check with me. He lied to me. It's right there in his back pocket, or sitting in the seat of his truck." Mm -hmm. He said, "I'll pay you tomorrow." Well, I was done with the job. He should have paid me right then. That was his time, right then. But no, he made me come back, drive home, drive back down there, spend ten more dollars worth of gas and whatnot, and then make me wait until two or three o'clock in the afternoon and write me a check, just so he could hold the money that much longer. I'm telling you, that man right there is going to face judgment someday. God's going to have him face that judgment for treating a poor man bad when he had it with him. And this scripture right here, if you read it, you read it for yourself. Once you read it and see it, then you're accountable. If you're that type of man, you need to change your ways because someday you're going to have that come against you. That's going to come up and hurt you. And then in verse 28, do not say to your neighbor, go and come back. And then he said, uh, do not devise evil against your neighbor for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do you know it's a safe place when you got a neighbor? If you got a neighbor, you're in kind of a safe place. Your neighbor kind of, I like my neighbor tell me when I'm going to church on Sunday and somebody comes up because they know I go to church so they come and rob my house on Sunday. Well, I got a neighbor don't go to church, but I say, you see anybody in my yard, you let me know, will you? Well, a few weeks ago, they saw somebody in my yard, but they figured it was my friends because they were loading their car. And they loaded it with all my tools and took off, and they weren't my friends at all. They were somebody stealing from me. So anyway, it is good to have a neighbor to watch out for you. And then you've got to be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful in this area that you don't blame your neighbor for something that you don't know. Somebody calls the police department and said, your dog's out there. Uh, running around and you say well my neighbor did that you don't know your neighbor did that somebody in the car might have went by some there may be a, a busybody lady down the street with a pair of monoculars looking down your way and every time she sees a dog's head or tail she calls a law against it and and it just happened to be your dog but be careful how you blame your neighbor but make sure your facts are right be terrible if you blame your neighbor and it wasn't your neighbor and you cause a ruckus. Now you got to live next to him and he ain't happy with you and you ain't happy with him. Terrible place to be, isn't it? All because you ran your mouth without checking it out. And it's your own fault. It said, do not strive with a man without cause if he has done thee no harm. That's what I'm saying. Don't strive with a man if he's done you no know. If you don't know he's done you harm, don't talk about him. It said, do not envy the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. This is the guy I was just talking about. You get done. He's got plenty of money. He can write you a check. You, he's building a house. He's got plenty of money. He's a contractor. He's got more money than he needs. But he wants to be hard to get along with. But the Bible says don't be envious of him because he has got plenty of money. And then uh, be careful that you don't choose any of his ways. Don't take his ways on you. Then you work somebody the next week and you do the same thing to them. That's not right. Solomon said, I don't understand the way of a poor man when he gets a hold of some money. When he gets a hold of some money, he acts just like the rich man did. The very thing he hated and he didn't like. And then you give him a pocket full of money and turn him around and let him start building a house and he'll do a little old small contract the same way the other guy did him. It's not right. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you're in the Lord and you're in this book, learn how to live. Learn how to live properly. Learn how to live for God. Learn how to treat your brother. Learn how to treat your sister. And well, a quick verse right here. It says, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel 
is with the upright. Don't be perverse, but be with the Lord. Well, I see our time has come and gone. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I'll see you next time.